The water is cold. My kayak has just capsized in the frigid Bering Sea off the coast of Alaska. I try and fail to ride it and get back in. I'm alone. No one knows where I am. But I know that I need to get out of the water soon before the cold takes me coordination away and I drown. But how? I see the shore about a half hour swim away. Can I withstand the cold water for that long? I don't know. But I know enough about survival to know that the odds are against me. I don't want to die. I'm 25 years old. I want to explore the world. I want to have an interesting life. And I can see my dreams and my life are about to slip away right in front of me. I've got to avoid panicking if I want to live. I'm scared. I'm really scared. I'm also angry. I'm angry at myself for having gotten myself into this mess. And I take that anger and the fear and I turn it into fury so I can stay in control. I will survive. I will survive. I will survive. I kick off my rubber boots so I can swim. I'm now barefoot. To stay alive, I need to get out of the cold water. The cold gets to me as I swim towards that lonely shore. When I finally reach it, the frozen tundra is covered by a half an inch of snow and ice. I try to walk, but I just fall down. I no longer have the coordination to stand. Instead, I crawl up the beach, gathering twigs and sticks to start a fire with. My fingers are too cold and stiff to strike matches, so I try putting the matches in my teeth and dragging the striker across. The wind blows them out. I try my cigarette lighters, but my thumb is too stiff to run them, and holding in one hand and striking with the other doesn't work. I will survive, I tell myself. I keep passing out from the cold, then waking up and continuing to try getting the fire started. After five long hours of trying, failing, passing out, and trying again, I finally get a fire going. And I huddle beside that fire for the rest of the long, dark, cold night. I will survive, I tell myself. When daylight comes, I can see a cabin in the distance. Between the cabin and I are four small rivers and a mile and a half of snow-covered tundra. I kicked off my rubber boots in the water, so I'm barefoot. In bare feet, I stumble my way across the frozen tundra. My feet soon freeze. As I cross the thin layer of ice on top of the ground, my bare feet break through. They're badly cut, but because they're frozen, they don't bleed, and I don't feel them any longer. Finally, I get to the banks of the last river, the other side of which is the cabin, and I see someone on the other side. I won't live! He sees me. He rows over, gets me, rows me back, takes me up to the cabin, and my recovery begins. When I was a young child, I had severe asthma, and it was not at all certain that I was going to live. Much of my childhood, when I was not in hospital, was spent confined in my room. And on the ceiling of the room, there was a light, and that light had a map of the world on it. And I looked up at that light, and it, I longed to experience the real world. 
I wanted to taste, touch, and smell the sea. Know the mountains, the forests, the deserts, the fierce wind, bitter cold, hot sun. I just didn't want to be inside looking at a map of the world. As that child, I decided that I would live to explore the world. And that's what I was doing at the age of 25 in Alaska. I was living. Since then, I've lived in five countries, traveled to 19 more, and sailed my boat from the Arctic to the tropics to Antarctica. And I continue to live, because there is still so much to explore in this great world. Each day, I choose to live, because living, to me, my purpose for living is to explore. What does living mean to you?